Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. And today's episode is all about this thing down here as we tackle this long overdue request from Michelle Bibby, I'm murdering that name, The Great. He was curious about how to do a lower third and the animated intro. Now the animated intro is crazy simple, so I'll cover that later in the year as it's 100% done in Cinema 4D. But this guy down here, that's a different story. As I mentioned before, it's called a lower third, or a nameplate, or whatever you want to call it. It's a fancy way of putting some information on screen, be it the name of your host, a guest, or even some social media crap. It also adds a bit of production value to your video too. We've all seen videos that look like this. Hello, and welcome to this special After Effects tutorial. Dinner time, sweetheart. Mom, I'm trying to make a video. I'm gonna have to start this again. Yeah, let's avoid that trap and get to work. Hey guys, here we are in After Effects. We'll be making the basic lower third I've shown you today. It's very easy and it consists of only two parts, the logo plate and the name plate. So let's get started. First, let's open a new comp, full HD, and give it a time of say six seconds. Let's call it lower third and hit OK. We'll then head up and grab the rounded rectangle tool, but feel free to grab any shape you like, it's up to you. Next, let's set the fill and the stroke. Click the fill name itself to bring up the fill options, as this allows us to use a gradient which is quite fancy. I'm going to use a radial gradient and then set my colours to two different shades of blue. If you don't get the gradient exactly how you want it the first time, you can always come back and change it. Next, let's set the stroke the exact same way, only this time we'll go with a linear gradient and make it grey. From there, let's draw our logo shape. That wasn't so hard, was it? Next, let's head over to the project menu where I've imported the film learn logo. Let's drag and drop that into the comp. We'll then resize it and move it into place in order to fit it in our little logo box. We'll then select both layers, hit Control Shift C and pre-compose them and call it logo. Once that's done, head up, grab the anchor point tool, then we'll shift the anchor point into the center of our logo box. Okay, time for a little animation. Hit S to bring up scale, Scrub forward about 6 frames and then we'll hit the stopwatch. We'll then move forward 1 frame and bring it up to say 103%. Move forward 1 more frame and shift it back to 100. From there, we'll scrub back to the start of the comp, change the scale value to 0%. Let's then head right over to the 5 second mark, add a keyframe, skip ahead 1 frame, up to 103, and you guessed it, ahead 1 more frame and back to 100. We'll then skip ahead 6 frames more, change the scale value to 0%. Our next step is to head back to the start, hit R and rotate our logo 10 degrees. Scrub forward until our logo is at the 100% scale mark, hit the stopwatch and then rotate it back to 0. Skip ahead to the end of our animation at the 5 second mark and then repeat this process again. Let's check out a preview. Sweet, that's part one done already. Next part is even easier. Head back to our lower third comp and back up to that rounded rectangle. This time we're drawing our nameplate, so let's get a nice long rectangle happening. Not bad, sir. You can then adjust the fill and stroke settings if you like at this stage too. Next, grab the text tool and write your information in. Once your text is done, grab the pick whip and parent it to our nameplate layer. We'll then select the nameplate, hit P, and scrub to the point where our logo has finished its animation in its entirety. Save frame 17. Hit the stopwatch and position the plate exactly where you want it. Skip forward one frame, move it forward just a little bit. Skip forward one more frame and then move it back. This adds a little wiggle to your animation and it looks pretty sharp in my opinion. We'll then scrub back to just after our logo animation's finished. I think it's frame eight. We'll then drag our nameplate back so it's hidden behind our logo plate. Next, let's scrub ahead and reverse the animation so the nameplate withdraws just before our logo goes away. My nameplate takes 11 frames to come out, so head to the start of your logo disappearing and count 11 frames back. We'll then add a keyframe, skip ahead one frame, shift it forward, skip ahead one frame, shift it back. We'll then move forward to the frame just before your logo begins to leave and shift our nameplate back on behind it. Let's check out a preview. Not bad, but you can see the nameplate's butt. Let's fix that. Grab both your text and shape layer, hit Control shift c and pre-compose them. We'll then call it nameplate. We'll then scrub back to just after our logo animation's finished. 
We'll then head up, grab that rectangle tool and draw a mask around the logo box. Head down to your mask settings and change the mask transfer mode to subtract. And bam, no more butt hanging out. The last step is to turn on motion blur for the layer and the logo plate. You can also add a drop shadow, some bevel alphas, just to pretty it up a bit and get a bit of separation between the nameplate and the logo plate. But that's up to you. Done. Add up all those steps and we end up with something like this. Nice, eh? So that's making up your own animated lower third, gang. You can change up the animation to virtually limitless variations and make it completely your own or just keep it simple. The power is yours! Thank you so much for watching guys, if you liked the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it, if you're new here give that subscribe button a poke, don't forget to check out our other awesome content, if you have a request you can hit me up in the comments or my twitter or the facebook page, we'll be getting back into some flashy effects next week so stay tuned and as always, keep learning! <laughs>